Well, hello there. I'm the Big Heavy, and today I'm taking a look at the High Boost RV 3.0 Signal Booster. I'm going to do a quick unboxing. We're going to install this on my Winnebago RV, and we'll ultimately see if it does what it says it's built to do on the box, which is take a weak cellular signal, broadcast it inside your vehicle, and ultimately let you communicate, work, etc., from some of those remote locations that are usually the best spots to camp in, but not always the best spots to get a cellular signal in. So let's jump into the unboxing. All right, so here we go. Fairly nice packaging. What I do think is kind of exciting about this unit is according to the box, and I realize this is sideways, it is 5G compatible. So we should be able to boost whatever signal we can get, including those high speed 5G signals, which again is a nice thing in terms of working from your RV or vehicle. Hmm. Back of the box, there's a little bit of a diagram kind of showing you those three major components. Again, you got that outdoor antenna, the signal booster itself, inside antenna, and obviously a power supply to get the whole thing working. And let's open her up and see how she looks. So at least in this particular unit, no tape or anything you have to deal with, which is kind of nice. All right, first off, we have a manual in here. Uh, there is a US-based address for customer support and email and phone number on the back. Apparently these guys are based in Texas or at least their customer support is. Uh, packaging looks pretty nice. You know, there's some good solid foam in here. And we have the, oh, it's kind of heavy, the signal booster itself. Uh, this is actually surprisingly heavy. I'd say this is you know, maybe a good two pounds uh, we got some nice rubber bumpers on here, some indicator lights, uh, heat shrink on there. Looks like it's some kind of aluminum maybe or uh, or metal. It is you know heavy like it's it's not lightweight aluminum. We have a indoor antenna jack in there, nicely labeled uh, DC power in, and an outdoor antenna jack and a USB port. Not sure what the USB port is for, but we'll uh, take a look at the manual and see if we can figure that out. Uh, no mounting screws on the back. Uh, it does look like having read the manual, these two little areas here are designated as a place where you can put some, some hook and loop type stuff, which uh, is the generic name for Velcro. So I believe they provide that to you, but we'll see as we go through the unboxing. So next up looks like we have some, an antenna mast. Uh, I would say this looks to be about a little over a foot. Uh, it does have two sections, so it looks like you can get a couple foot antenna mast going. And there does appear to be another layer here. Yep. So next layer we have, looks like some uh, dual-sided mounting tape type, uh, type stuff. We got a pack of zip ties. We have a spring. I assume this is for the antenna base. So you know, if you whack something while you're driving around, that should hopefully give you enough uh, give not to snap your antenna. We have a little packet of antenna mounting stuff. Uh, what I was excited about and part of the reason I went with this particular unit is they do give you these U brackets. My plan is to bolt this on the back of the ladder in my RV and we'll go through that during the installation. We have a power supply, looks like a pretty typical uh, power supply, has a US plug, and it does indicate a 12 volt output on here, which is nice. So you could theoretically hardwire this into your RV if you so desired. You'd have to build yourself a custom plug or figure out what, uh, what kind of barrel plug this is, but I do like that it's 12 volts and not some esoteric voltage. We have a little double-sided sticky tape. So again, some mounting related stuff. I assume that goes with this guy who is the inside antenna and yep can verify that fits on there pretty nicely and the purpose of this guy is to connect to the amplifier and rebroadcast your cellular signal inside your vehicle so essentially that's what takes the amplified signal and lets your phone connect to it so that's kind of major component number two along with the signal amplifier itself which is this guy obviously we also have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style power supply. It does have a little USB plug on there, so that's nice. So you can kind of get a little value and not just kind of waste a 12 volt plug in your vehicle. We have those uh, hook and loop, AKA Velcro mounting strips that go on the bottom of the amplifier. There's you know, these little spots for them, so you can glue these on. Uh, I'll probably hide this guy in a cabinet and use this Velcro to affix him. 
And then we have the exterior antenna itself. And this is kind of nice. Looks like they give you a short little section of antenna cable here. You know, I guess this is about two feet. And then they've got a pretty big bag of antenna cable. So, you know, obviously you're going to need a little more than this, but it looks like this will keep it nice and manageable when we go and build the pole and ultimately mount the antenna. And then this is what I'll use to run from the antenna to where I put that signal amplifier. This antenna itself is surprisingly light. I don't know why I expected it to be a little heavier. Your antennas are generally uh, not that complex, but appears to be a plastic. Again, pretty lightweight, has a threaded base, so it'll screw into that mounting pole that they provided. And I like that this is a pretty unobtrusive looking antenna. I believe it's omnidirectional, so we don't have to goof around too much with you know moving it to get it to face a signal. And we'll see if it ultimately lives up to its hype of pulling in a signal and amplifying it. So pretty straightforward unboxing, nice packaging. Everything looks pretty good. So I'll move the box out of the way, give you kind of one final look of everything that came in here, and then we'll get out to the RV and we'll set this puppy up. So here's the results of that unboxing and all their grandeur. You've got all your mounting supplies. I do like that it appears they've kind of given you everything you could need or want. You've got your external antenna as well as the mast, which is in two sections. My understanding is you can either use one or both sections. I'm probably going to use one. We'll see how that works. I ultimately want to keep the antenna at the same height as the RV so I don't end up clipping it on anything. You've got that spring mount and then you've got your collection of mounting goodies for the antenna as well as that longer antenna cable so you can ultimately connect it into the signal amplifier which is sort of the brains of the operation. You also have a manual obviously. You've got your two power supplies. You only need to use one. I'm not sure which one I'll use, but we'll kind of leap that bridge when we get to the installation. And then you've got your interior antenna, which is what your cell phone will ultimately connect to and where it grabs that boosted signal. So with that, let's get out to the RV and get to work. All right, so we're out at the RV, got my antenna assembled, and the assembly was not as straightforward as I thought it'd be. It's conceptually pretty simple. You got the you know, actual antenna piece screws into this extension rod. They give you two of those, which is nice. I think they said you can get this up to like 10, 11 feet. Uh, obviously the higher you put an antenna, the better your reception is gonna be. But for me, I wanna keep this guy about at the same height as my max height of my RV, which is the air conditioner unit down there. So I'm gonna give up a little bit of, you know, signal quality for kind of peace of mind. Make sure I don't rip this thing off while I'm tearing down the highway. The nuance to the assembly process, so you know, antenna extension rod, uh, this little piece that allows the antenna wire to come out, and then this spring-loaded base, was that the uh, cable at the end of the antenna is a pretty snug fit inside of this guy in particular. And you know, I would obviously pretty easily get him to the end where it would be nice if the inside of this was tapered. I, that might be a little too challenging from a manufacturing perspective but I couldn't get the end of the cable to pop out of the end of this extension. So what I ultimately did was, you know, a solution to everything, which is blue painter's tape, wrapped just a, you know, one little layer of tape around this guy, kind of made it into a little cone, and that let me jam him out of this extension. Uh, I was then able to affix this, uh, this little piece right here. I don't know if you can tell, um, but that's what allows the cable to come out and ultimately be routed into the, the interior of the motorhome. And then I ended up using two adjustable wrenches to tighten up these two pieces since the fit was a little bit snug. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you know, I dinged up the um, paint a little bit on there, but yeah, that's not something I'm going to see or worry about too much. So ultimately, I have a nice ladder on the back of this motorhome that I'm going to use for my mounting. Have it approximately the same height as the air conditioner, so I don't have to worry about having something extra in the back. And let's, let's, let's get this guy mounted up. All right, so we're mounted up. I couldn't really film this since I wanted to avoid falling off the ladder for obvious reasons, but pretty straightforward. Uh, seems like good hardware. I don't know if this is stainless, but it seems like nicely, you know, relatively well-machined metal. Uh, pretty standard U-bolt mount. The only complaint I'd have with this mounting bracket was the picture kind of showing the diagram in the manual was super small, but essentially you've got your uh, U-bolt, you've got this um, bracket piece, and then you've got a washer, a lock washer, and a nut on there. So pretty easy. Uh, they didn't give you any tools. This is a 10 millimeter uh, nut here. If you have it, highly recommend one of these little ratcheting sockets uh, just so you can kind of zoom these guys in. 
And the only other key I'd give you here is you don't want to tighten the heck out of these nuts since you do have a hollow metal tube on your ladder. And I assume, you know, most ladders are going to be hollow. If you tighten the heck out of that, you're going to be able to bend and dent that tube. And that's going to weaken it significantly, which obviously you don't want on something that you're going to be climbing up on on occasion. So now that that's done, the relatively simple next step is to screw this antenna on. And you know, obviously the nut there is, uh, is what you use um, to screw that on. So I'm gonna stop filming a little bit so I can do some two-handed action. All right, pretty straightforward here. Again, the uh, washer, and there's a little flange on the bottom of this so that'll line it up in the hole. And then the nut goes on there, you know, grab your adjustable wrenches and you can crank this guy down pretty good. It does have a little bit of a um, bit of spring in there. So, you know, that's nice. Although that does seem to move the ladder a little bit. So not something that, uh, that I hope to engage um, too often. So there's our antenna. The only other pro tips I'd give you for this uh, install process, I would bring up a little baggie. Um, you know, this is just one of the baggies that uh, came with the kit. I put all the nuts in there since obviously, you know, don't want to drop them down since there's probably a 0.0% .0 chance of ever recovering them. And then, you know, use a real ladder. If you're doing this at camp, you know, you might be tempted to try and do it hanging from uh, your RV ladder. This is definitely a job I'd want two hands for just since you got these little nuts and fasteners and stuff that you kind of got to keep track of and having those flying all over the place would, uh, would be pretty unpleasant while trying to hang on the ladder with, uh, with one hand. So that's that. Next step is to connect up the longer cable uh, to this end. I would leave a little drip loop in here just, you know, for kicks and then run this to the inside of the RV and hook up the amplifier. All right, so here's my install. I've got this nice cabinet in the Winnebago view and you can see there's this little roof access port where I'm going up to my external antenna. Uh, the units in here looks, you know, relatively nice. It's a little wobbly right now, so I probably will use that Velcro that they supplied once I get that set up. But got the antennas connected, uh, external antenna here, which goes to that back ladder, internal antenna here, which, you know, for now sort of is sitting there looking somewhat janky. This will not be a great test, I don't think, because I have really good cell coverage here, but I'm kind of more interested in seeing how the the app works. So let's pull out that little plug I've got here. Plug this guy in. <clears throat> All right. And we have some blinky blinks, which is good. And I believe all blue is ultimately a good sign. I think that means that the antennas are spaced properly. This thing should be able to transmit and receive at maximum capacity. And let's see what the app looks like and see what that does for us. All right, so let's check out this Signal Supervisor app. So it seems to be a generic app for High Boost and several others. It does make you go through a, in my opinion, rather overzealous registration process where they ask for information like your phone number and address. But ultimately, once you get through with that, you are able to add your device. In my case, I've got the Big Heavy uh, RV on here, which is their Travel 3.0 type device. And if you tap on that, you can get some signal information from the actual device, which is kind of nice. So you can see the four different cellular bands that this unit supports, and you can see the output from each of those. So basically what they say in the manual is that you ultimately want 50 decibels of gain. So that kind of means your indoor antenna is set up correctly. I've got that on all the bands, so that's good. That kind of means my antennas are working properly, at least that's how I've interpreted the manual. And I can see the, I can kind of see the quality of the connection. So some of the bands like this AWS 2100, the connection is a bit poor. Some of the others are much better. And in this case, I went from about one bar of 5G service inside my RV, boosted up to three bars and saw that typical 20 to 30% speed boost that I see when using this device. All right, so we're out in a relatively rural part of Nova Scotia where I've got one bar on my cell phone without the booster turned on. And I thought this would be a pretty reasonable test, so I did three speed tests. I will put the average result of those without the booster turned on on the screen below. And then I went and from the same position in the RV, kind of sitting in the, the chair over there, did the same three speed tests with the booster turned on. And I immediately noticed once I turned on the booster, I went from one to two bars without it to 
three to a couple times five bars. And there was a pretty noticeable speed increase according to the speed test. And you may think, you know, this is not earth shattering, you know, 10 megabits with the, with the booster turned on, but it's a good 40-ish percent faster than without the booster turned on, which, you know, is 40% faster video uploading. It's maybe the difference between successfully doing a Teams or Zoom call or having it drop out. It's, you know, uploading a video in my case to YouTube 40% faster. So that's a pretty legit boost. And I've tested this a variety of times throughout this trip. We've been in New Hampshire, Maine, New Brunswick, and had much better cell coverage during the early portion of this trip. So I wanted to wait until I got something that was a little more challenging to do a full test. But in all cases, it would boost by speeds by, again, about that 20 to 40-ish percent. So the thing legitimately works. It's you know pretty easy to set up. I've kind of Velcroed it to the back wall of the little cabinet I have in my Winnebago view where I keep all my electronics and all my chargers and all that stuff. It just sort of sits in there. It doesn't make any noise. I'm able to take the antenna out and put it on the counter when I need it and then stow it away in that same cabinet when I'm not using it. So overall, pretty unobtrusive, pretty highly functional and you know pretty uh, pretty solid device. I have no complaints. So I would give it a solid two thumbs up if you are in an RV type application or, you know, an overlanding type setup where you're going to be just kind of on the fringe of a cell signal or you're going to have an okay-ish signal and you need something a little bit, you know, again, that 20 to 40% faster than okay-ish. This is a pretty good unit for that purpose. Pretty easy to set up and so far so good.